Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 53 of Thessia, our Australian-inspired build. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Not too much to say today, apart from it's time for the International Airport, a massive bit of transport infrastructure. That is really cool. So we'll prepare our area that we're going to work with today. We're going to set this up across the river on the opposite side of the CBD, where we've got a lot of our industry. It's a lot of fun, this build. A massive episode. So please enjoy it. I'll catch you in the live play. to live that's it everyone now, the downtown is undergoing a little bit of light flooding <laughs> which is uh, not the greatest hopefully this will clear up uh shortly it is actually moving parked cars isn't it it's is quite the flood but uh it's all in the interest of public transport <laughs> i'm sure those car owners will be pleased to know so welcome to thessia international airport everyone of course um, always love the airport builds and for today's we're taking inspiration from sydney international now we're not going for a direct recreation here very much like we did in ilos with the uh, phoenix sky harbor that was pretty much recreated with the general kind of blueprint of the whole facility but for this year's international airport we're going to be looking at sydney which has a couple of runway piers which we're going to try working around the landmass towards the edge of the river as well having our planes take off kind of over the big green belt directly through the middle of the city. So that should be really cool. I really want to take inspiration from the runway piers and the configurations of the terminals themselves. And we've also run our train line here. So this is the national train line of Thessia. See the trains coming and going here. Uh, these guys are now tunneled underground all the way until here, where they either emerge back out or they cross over the bridge and come back out this way to get into the downtown so that's where those train lines have gone and we also have trams cycling and metro to bring into the airport as well uh, courtesy of teddy radko's bridge connections that he left us what feels like years ago now <laughs> that this bridge was built so finally today we will be able to bring these in so as always with any airport build be it vanilla or modded i always like to start out with the runways just because they're the biggest things we have to make sure we give them the most room so we want two here and i'd like them to be quite staggered so i'm thinking my first terminal or i guess terminal one is going to be here i think with the two one ways running this direction so let's run with that initial concept and idea here okay so why don't we go for so let's actually place down our terminal building first just the first one I think we're going to go with the modern terminal, I reckon, for this particular configuration. So let's have it about... I want to make sure we've got room for plenty of car parking. Somewhere about there, I think. Should be quite nice. Yeah, so that just helps me position my runways a little bit better. So let's bring the runway in. Um, first of all, I'd like to have it go... Let's up onto that guideline there, that should be fairly sensible. 200, let's say. Let's kind of just gauge the feeling and the impression of that, right? Come down here over the mountains and approach onto the runway. Be able to land here and then they're taken off over this big green space right through the middle of the city here. Although I'm pretty sure the outside connection for planes is over by Ascension. So I reckon they're probably going to end up doing a mad U-turn and going off that way. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. But that's a big 200 unit runway. I'm just kind of trying to gauge the, the scale and the scope of the facility here. So I think I'm going to be happy with that. It's going to be great airport viewing, isn't it? From uh, Queen's Park up here. That's going to be fabulous, isn't it? Can't wait to see the view from up here. <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be awesome. Cool. So I think, I think, I think we'll go with that. Uh, I always then like to use my taxiways to run the configuration. So, and there's, there's taxiways both sides here. 
So let's do 10 units. This can then come all the way back down into the bottom of the runway. And we'll do the same over here as well. Then all the way back up to box that in. And then of course reverse their directions. So that would be one one way configured, right? I think. I think I'm okay with that. I also I wouldn't mind a smaller terminal around here either, I don't think. What's that? We'll we'll see what happens with that. So I definitely want at least two runways. We may end up with three, but for right now I think I'm just gonna try and run with two. So I definitely want to measure this. I know that I want this to be at least 20 units here. So let's do that as 10, and then we know the next 10 over will be 20. So we can have that one about here. And then we could have that one run as 190. And that's going to give us two very striking bits of just runway infrastructure there, isn't it? There'll be some more great airport viewing opportunities as well here from the um, Botanical Gardens too. So I think we'll run with this kind of configuration. Let's go ahead and run our taxiways in the same configuration as last time. Make sure everyone's peeling off the end of the runway. Going back down and then joining this one over here again. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm after. Um, however, I definitely want these to be kind of jutting out into the water. So we're really going to change... Uh, the shape of the Thessia Bay here. Uh, so, yes, I do want some land left around them. So, I reckon what we might do actually is some dirt frames around the edge before we terraform here. And then, probably go again. Let's just measure out a distance here. We could do 10 units, would be there. So, I think we'll stick into units of 10. Let's do 30 here. 20 takes us back to the middle of the runway. Realize these aren't dirt roads. So make sure we upgrade here. And then, we'll do 10. Um, I'd really like to see the water kind of come in here. So why don't we do 10 here, then we'll do 15, another 20 there. And then let's see if we can change the angle here. Possibly to something like that. And then that's also a line from 10 units from this side too. So that would be 10. Do I want to do 20? No, let's, let's, do, let's do 10. And have that one come down there. This can connect into there. And then we can let the natural riverbank take over there, I think, is what I want to happen. And, I mean, what, what do we have here? We've got a four-lane industrial road that wants to come in. This is going to be one of the main roads into the airport alongside um, a new national road connection directly into the terminal. We won't have to worry about that. We've also got this road here as well. Which isn't really a public access road. This is kind of a back road out of the, the um, power plant here. Could maybe hook this into the national road as well. I'm not sure what's happening with this road yet. So we we'll want to make sure we save enough room for these to come down. Especially with the tram and the metro as well, I imagine. Let's do it down to there. And then our water inlet can start like here. And then our landmass can resume, if you like. So let's terraform all this out. And then we'll possibly use Network Mode 2 as well to align keys and watch the wonderful water flow.
So now look how different the Dacia Harbour already looks with these new chiseled out shorelines, right? Very impressive, isn't it? Love seeing our cruise liners come and go here too. Gonna be a huge bit of like just public transport infrastructure here. We could possibly even justify um, another cruise terminal over here, maybe. Just accept more cruise liners in. We only have the one at the minute. Uh, it could be something we explore, maybe, later on. Having a separate ferry terminal over here as part of the public transport network. Uh, but either way, let's now return to the next stage of the airport configuration, which is the terminals. So we're going to be using the modern stuff. Now, this road here... I disconnect this. <laughs> uh, Valkyrie is flooding, by the way. It's fine. Um, if I disconnect this, this really kills an arterial. They could just, I guess, go around Ascension. They can still make it the way there, but... It's only a temporary disconnection, isn't it? So, I'm not going to restrict myself with the terminal design by having this national road here. So, we'll bring that back in at a later date, but for right now, I just want to make sure the terminal takes the priority, and then we can bend those national networks around it, if you like. So let's give ourselves a bit more room and let's see what we think about this. So let's come back into our airport stuff and we want to start placing together uh, the plane stands really. Uh, just to kind of gauge how much room we have to play with. So large aircraft stand and medium. I don't think we want many small aircraft stands here. If you want a small regional flight then fly out of Ascension. This is really for kind of big old jumbo boys and international flights. So I think we're going to stick mainly with, especially on Terminal 1, we'll probably have a lot of our large jumbos, I think. Let's start configuring our concourses here. So I'm going to try to take as much inspiration from the shape of the terminals in Sydney for this. So we'll have this one here. We'll also have some little outs near here. And we'll take it up again. With airports, I always try to stick to units of 10. I think it just helps keep things a little bit more... A little sensibly organized, I think. Also, I wouldn't mind actually even having yeah, the second terminal here. And um, if we could actually align this with some concourse, let's do five. And then can we snap our modern two story terminal onto that? And we can. And then we'll have a bit more concourse. What sort of distance are we looking at here? About 40 units, isn't it? So let's do... 30 up here again. And then we'll have something like that. As our general terminal complex. This does allow lots of roads and metro to come in. Uh, where we are talking about metro, I definitely want to factor in the... Public transport metro stop. So the elevated metro station here, I think, has to be included, doesn't it? So, probably there, I reckon. Although, I'm going to remove this little piece here to allow that to flow a bit easier. This way, the line will terminate here. We can have lots of flowy roads coming out this way, get lots of car parking at the front of the terminal. Tons of detailing, of course, to be had through here. But uh, this does allow us to connect in the metro line, which I think we're going to do immediately because it, because it's an elevated line. It has the potential to possibly get in the way of the build a little bit ways down the line. But we'll, we'll see what goes on. So we want to feed this. I guess we could. Yeah, let's just move this out of the way a little bit. So <laughs> it's all, all coming to fruition now, this area. It's been a very long time coming. We can delete that as well. Uh, now, we do have a height differentiation to contend with here, which could be interesting. Uh, we could start bringing things down. So I, th I, think, I think we might do that, actually. You can always sort the gradient out as well with uh, network multi-slope as well. Let's bring everyone down just a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. So let's push out this hill. I definitely want to maintain this hill, I think, because I think once it's all designed and done and detailed, this little change in height here will be really nice just from kind of a grand view over the airport. You know, if we can develop a larger sort of metro stop here, you can sort of stop and see the planes passing by around the water with the main terminals down the other end. 
Well, that should be quite cool, I think. But, um, let's do one thing at a time. <laughs> That's right. It was very exciting putting these things together. Uh, so, let's use Network Multi Tool and we'll just go curve here and here. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Might even force upgrade this into a little bridge as well. Not a Network Multi Tool here. I know we can't because it's into the stations. That, that, that's fine though, that's fine. Uh, and then furthermore, we also want to have roads coming through here as well. So that's going to happen probably next to and then underneath, isn't it? So let's go ahead and grab this industrial road. Yeah, well, we really want to align it with this one here, don't we? Then it's going to make it look like you can actually stop here as almost like another entrance into the terminal building, isn't it? Let's go with that. I want to give the airfield as much room as possible, so I guess really we could actually start to create some nice layers just by pushing that one back there. I don't want that layer to be so severe there, but we'll just terraform that away. Yeah, okay. And then let's bring this one under the metro and hopefully just a little bit of network multi spice will see us connect in, at least with the road connection, so we have that for the terminal. And this can probably join back in with the national road as well. But that definitely gives me enough room, I think. And there's also... There's no reason why this needs to curve off over this direction either, so I think we'll give ourselves even more breathing room here, I think. So this is probably a space where we can develop that second terminal if we wanted to, isn't it? Definitely up against the waterfront here. As you can actually see in Sydney, it's essentially what we've got here. This big arterial road kind of loops in a horseshoe under the airports. And there's a natural conclusion for it to reach here, isn't there? Yeah, there is. But either way, let's focus on Terminal 1. Yeah, so let's get our plane stands in. Next most important thing of any airport build, of course. Yeah, so let's have our jumbos first of all. We'll give these guys the most room. We'll grab our large aircraft stand and let's have let's see where we want these to be facing. Let's do how does three look together side by side there? I think I'll be happy with that. Uh let's repeat the same thing over the side as well. Just trying to line up the green outline with the edge of the concrete. That way I find the planes won't clip as much with each other. Cool. That gives us three. Now, with modded, can we, can we place one on the end there? I'm not entirely sure. Find out. I don't know if you will work or not. Your gantry is a little off, given that, but I think from the right angle, you wouldn't really be able to tell, I don't think, would you? Let's see if we were to drag that concourse out a little bit as well. Yeah, I don't think I mind that at all. Or we could also put a smaller plane stand at the end as well. That actually might be a little bit more appropriate. And we place down a medium one. And with that, if we can find it. There we go. Give him a little spin. And have him... Look something like that. Yeah. I think we can get away with that, can't we? Uh, then with further stands, we could also have them loop around this side. Which again, I think we might just need to extend the concourse down a little bit for, which is okay. Uh, and then we'll work on getting these uh, hooked in here. So let's return now to our taxiways. So I guess we could have more over here, couldn't we? And um, let's do going to extend this piece of concourse down a little bit as well. Not too close to the taxiway because we don't want uh, wings obviously clipping with the terminal. And I reckon let's do some... A couple of mediums here, maybe. Maybe we will just do one large. I think we'll have one large. And then for this side here, we will switch to mediums. But that's a... Decent number <laughs> of, um, of aircraft stands here. And so now it's all about feeding them into the one-way loop system of an airport, of course. 
So let's start out with this one here. You're going to come directly across. We might need to do some network multi tool work here to switch directions, but we'll we'll come to that in a second at least. So all these go together and come meet up with this one that will feed you back out onto the runway system, which is great. And we also need to alternate that one coming back this way too. So again, I'll leave the unit of 10. And that way everyone can stay sensibly spaced. Now, these things can develop a habit of becoming very rigid just because of the nature of airports. So I think the occasional kind of 45 degree angle can really help. So that shows that I'm not there. Version there. So now that's fully configured. That's wonderful news. Uh, this one here can you don't want to come straight out are you can we do it that way instead then i think we can indeed that factors those in pretty much the same story here as well and then can we do well, that angle there maybe so if we're going to have that as the configuration which does allow everyone to land and take off again we don't need these internal I guess I'll see if I want to connect this runway. I, I, I guess we need to decide whether or not both terminals are going to have access to both runways. Because if they are, then we need to keep this taxiway here intact as well. But if we don't, they can probably leave now. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it in for right now. We'll definitely see what happens with it. But um, I would like to begin accepting some planes in. <laughs> That's the... Mixed density district continues to flood like crazy. The water will calm down eventually, I promise. But uh, for right now, I'm happy with, I think, the configuration of Terminal 1. Not too bad at all. There's lots of detail to put here. Oh, yes, look at this. We get to see Bessie's first planes arrive, and there is a lot of them. <laughs> it's absolute, absolute swarms of planes. Maybe we need to put optimized outside connections on here. I don't really want this many points. I don't want to be like the Sky Harbour. If you guys remember how busy the Sky Harbour was. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so let's see how they take off and which way they go. Hopefully there's no ridiculous U-turns in. I know. Mostly unavoidable in cities, but... I would like to at least have... Yeah, they U-turn immediately, don't they? As they're going that way. Is that the case with every plane? Yeah. Off through the way. Oh no, he went a different way. There we go. Okay, yeah, they're not all going the same way. There we go. A little plane's taking off. Oh, doing a big... <laughs> this is doing a big circle. Would you look at that, everyone? Tremendous. Fantastic. So, I might put optimised outside connections on just to nerf the number of planes that are leaving here. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that. Although, there's some stupid turning going on there, though. Hopefully that doesn't happen overly often. We will wait and see. Cool. So let's get people in and out of the airport next. Uh, let's grab our metro stop. This should be here. And we will now extend the metro line. Finally, over here. Don't forget to add those stops back in over here as well. I'm not sure what will become of this little complex up here. I imagine, well, the tram is obviously going to come down as well, which we'll factor in a second too. Uh, right, so let's get all these guys hooked in together. Uh, they are using the one-way bus lane road, so we'll factor that in as well. Have all these guys run this way. Now we'll grab the industrial road. I think we'll just have different connections and nice node controlled and insertion marking tool junctions off of this one. It's probably going to change from industrial road, but we use it right now. Great opportunity here for some airport fence work as people come into land. And then over here, this will now come back down to earth. And hopefully have a sensible slope this way. But for right now, it can hook into the end of the National Road. With the National Road now also resuming, again, we'll develop larger, more impressive intersections here. At some point. It'd be really nice actually if we could keep this slightly more on the hillside. That's going to give a really sweet looking drive by, I think. As that people drive past the airport on the national road here. 
Connect that in with multi tool. Everyone seems happy there. And again, we can see this one here as so it comes down. We probably are going to configure. I mean, let's just have a little look at the terminal spacing. Uh, let's have. I think we'll probably stick with the same style of concourse. So we'll grab airport buildings. We're definitely going to need to push out our airport area here a little bit too. There we go. Push all this back. Fantastic. I think we'll probably keep it with the smaller terminal here, I think. And I really love this one to be waterside if possible. Obviously also allowing for uh, plane stands to be here. But we can always terraform more land into the river here if we want. Because we did actually make it a little bit wider. Cool. We may end up having to redraw this runway. But it's okay if we do. It's just, I'll do it off camera. So let's do 10. 20 and 10. And then we can repeat this terminal here. And have this as a smaller secondary terminal. Where again, our road can come down in some kind of configuration. I think with airports, you've always got to, to bear with them. They can be very daunting tasks, especially when you're also trying to make a video out of them. <laughs> but uh, they, they will get there eventually. Just there. Uh, just, just bear with them. You're welcome to enjoy them, I promise. And then with this, we've just got two lanes here, haven't we? So we'll just configure a one-way flow system around the interior. And then we can use this as a ways of holding some car parking in the middle. Maybe a little bit of multi-story action. Then this can come out and we'll just let these two networks right up against this one-way system here. We should look pretty cool once it's all done. Now, there's a possibility for even more kind of retaining more keys over here as well. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to use a ton of nodes this build. Not that this year should ever run into a, an issue with its node count, but you know, it's the airport. They kind of deserve them, don't they? And then push this back up here. Um, so I reckon we'll probably have these roads actually connect back over here. Let's connect them into the same place. You can go down there. This little industrial road we're running with can now join back up with the local arterial that comes out of the suburb. Something to that extent. We'll also do a little bit of multi-slope here as well. There you go. And then with this road here. I'll see if you wouldn't mind. We'll just feed that one straight up into this way. I think either way, we'll run them parallel for a little bit. And then let's have this one maybe snake off and come slightly uphill. And we'll just separate where the uh, join the other road networks. That should just hook into there now. Fabulous. And then of course, just arrange our flow system here too. So that does accommodate it. So over here, we definitely want this to be the smaller of the two terminals. So this is going to hold medium and small aircraft stands, I think. So we'll have small up against this way, not too close to the water. Let's go ahead and throw in one of those airport lounges over here, actually. Just on the edge there. That's a move. Let's make it part, uh, centered with the terminal building there. Yeah, and then after that, uh, we can then throw down our small aircraft stands. Same placing habit as before. Something a bit like that. And then we'll do some medium over this way. And the whole point of having these networks so close to the terminals like this, because in Sydney it's, just, it's, it's so dense and compact, is that when you're driving through here, you're going to see planes kind of passing over. The high-speed national road is going to be slightly elevated, you know, just to your side here as well. And, uh, you should just get a pretty nice view of the infrastructure. I really love seeing the um, CBD in the way of the skyline there. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? With the, the foreground, the airport there now as well. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Cool. So now let's run with our uh, runway configurations. Let's do... 
everyone coming down here, so yeah, these internal runways aren't needed anymore. You can break these off because the uh, terminals aren't having access to all directions, basically. So let's connect all of these in. We can form down this way and this way as well. So I think this one, yeah, this is where I prefer the shorter runway, so let's just reconfigure this one here. Break these open. We started from about here last time, didn't we? So let's bring it up. Possibly to about there. We'll have this one do 171 units there. Let's Brings it away a little bit from the terminal buildings. And then again, working with those units of 10, we can feed this one back up here now. And I think for aesthetic purposes, we may even feed... Um, and again, I guess we could give them access to this runway here, couldn't we? Probably no reason why we couldn't. Probably is some reason, actually. Some aviation police might not be happy with this, but... I think I do want to feed off some kind of like mock runways and taxiways just to help fill out the airfield a bit. But either way, that does leave the second smaller terminal with runway access in a pretty unique configuration, I think. I think I'm happy with that. Uh, hopefully we can also see uh, Metro arrive here as well at some point. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? Coming across the Thessia Bay Bridge. Here we go. Okay. I'll come down here. We will network multi slope this as well. Uh, did you not stop there? You should have done. How are you? No, there is... There was two stops there. Yeah, because he's the first one here. Anyone going to get off? Moment of truth, everyone. Nobody gets off, because no one's on it. <laughs> That's probably why, is it? Probably why nobody got off. There's, there's so much more room for infrastructure over here as well. You know, in terms of just... Getting, well, I guess we'll have to take a look around what's near Sydney for future builds over this side of the um, the island because so much of the downtown infrastructure has been focused around here over the last, well, the whole series basically, isn't it? So it's going to be really fun getting to do some more things over this way, I think. Get some high rises around here. And Sydney's just so inspiring for infrastructure. It really is. Wicked. So we've also put that road in there now as well. Um, I would love to get all this hooked in as well, so let's do it while we're here. And we will run with those bus lanes here as well. You okay? We're getting a bit of, um... Oh, it's because you're elevated, isn't it? There we go. I don't know what was going on there. I would definitely love some national network connections off of here as well. And that feeds straight into the terminal. So let's prepare those. Um, I guess we could use one of the highway roads here, couldn't we? How does this one look if we were to elevate there? It's, it's, it's the right lane math, isn't it? Although the bus lane does switch there, which is incredibly irritating. Yeah, so then I'd love this one to essentially not stop on the local road here. I'd love this one to come straight over here with an eventual view to come back down to Earth. Probably about there. And then there's a connection to be made possibly here with lots of detailing time-lapse node controller work. I think. Also changing some weird stuff like this to just be middle sections. Do we look like that? Cool. So this way, this should make our airport just super interconnected by having all these little ramps and roads run off the national road. And we'll also feed them down as well, I think, into our local roads up here. Maybe we can have this one go in another direction. To be honest, I hadn't really factored in all the wonderful little layers that are going to be developing around um, Thessia International. But uh, it should be an immense amount of fun to uh, blend all this together. Uh, so we'll change these to bends. I don't know why they do that. I think it's just where the nodes change, isn't it? And then uh, a little bit of network multi-slope. Down here up to here. 
that should sort us out and then just with the occasional falls to ground and you can kind of see how it's like bumpy and wavy at the minute we just need to find those nodes that uh, change them to a slope with node controller should blend everyone a little smoothly and perhaps see where some sections also want to be elevated as well just like that i think and can we blend you together can you be a middle we can indeed yeah and then that should create some very nice layers indeed i'm buying it and we can do some of things down here as well on the exits of the terminal which um, i think we'll move into the detail time lapse for that but otherwise we will be here forever there we go we can see some new networks over here now getting use wonderful news he's using the other runway but i don't mind about that that's okay Cool. So everyone's flying off and away now across the Thessian Islands, which is tremendous to see. These guys are all okay over here. Just lots more networks to develop over here, right? Do some larger roundabout stuff here. Now, lots of node controller work to do. <laughs> so I think without further ado, let's move into what is likely to be a massive networking and detailing time lapse. Get yourself a drink and something to eat for this one. This is probably going to be a pretty significant episode. I'll see you guys on the other side of it. <laughs> so let's do a ton of bloody detailing and then we'll be right back.
let's start up a detailing review, shall we? So this episode could have gone on for quite literally ever, <laughs> but we have to call it somewhere, so this is where we'll call it. Uh, so let's have a look at Terminal 2, first of all. Um, so the road here now feeds back into Valkyrie, for those unfamiliar. Uh, this road here was just left untapped for many a generation. But now finally it comes across our train networks and loops up with the arterial. That comes down into the National Road and then up into the suburb over here as well. Uh, so done a little bit of pathwork here. Got a disabled ramp and some IMT stairs as well, just as a way to get back up the layer. With some nice fencing separating the public road from the terminal, I guess. Uh, Fessier flags and car parking make up pretty much the interior of Terminal 2. And then we also have an airport here. With some fused office buildings. Just as a bit of open building space with administration happening here. HR perhaps, safety. Whatever justification you want to give to some orbital airport office. Uh, and then this fence wraps around here as well with some natural Thessia overgrowth appearing in here. Uh, with our car parking and Thessia signs and flags that appear pretty often across the airport. Uh, up toward the big national road here now there's four junctions across this road that have all been IMT'd up in various different configurations that allow access into different parts of the airport. Our uh, bus line tapers off here as well as it rejoins the main road. And then this one just goes back off into the National Road. The link back up with the interchange over here where there has been some work done. There is now an Industrial Road that links up. That is getting a bit of use actually, which is nice to see. Uh, with the road that comes out this way, that is still to be tidied up over here. But this is the Ascension Samara Road that takes you down there uh, eventually. Anyway, so we're now starting to encroach upon this side of the map, so... Let me know some build ideas of what you want to see over here. Um, I definitely want to keep it CBD. I definitely want much more density over here. Like I said, I think we'll do a convention center of some sorts here. A big hotel nearby maybe as well. But uh, yeah, let me know what you want to see around this area. Because um, it's definitely going to be high density. But let me know what sort of density you want. And then coming back through here, we have also added in a train station. I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll follow the road. <laughs> we'll kind of move across each terminal. And there is also some airfield detent over here as well storage of baggage trucks and uh, catering trucks and whatnot nearby to the airport lounge. Uh, then across the road here at uh, the airport fence does take over as the chain link merges into it. So uh, really cool views from here. Here we go. We should hopefully see a Thessia plane taken off, which we'll have a look at in a second. Don't worry. We will uh, explore those Thessia planes together. Another plane coming into land there too. We kind of get the impression, right? You can see planes landing and taking off from the road here. Uh, this is a really cool aesthetic I'm extremely happy with. Getting back onto the runway there and then he's going to take off. Very dramatic when someone lands from this perspective so hopefully we'll see that <laughs> at some point today as well. Uh, and then this carries on before we do arrive at some more of these Thessia planes which is where we will uh, stop and take a look at them. Uh, just some more light prop work around them just to help fill some of that concrete space. But uh, wonderful work from the magical Blue Thunder, of course, who is the genius behind the whole ride collection. Um, easily some of the best vehicle assets you're ever likely to get on the workshop. Do go check out Blue Thunder and all his work that he's done over the years for the City of Skylines community. Uh, these are his Outback planes with some special Thessia editions as well. <laughs> really, really cool. Some of the best custom assets we've ever had, I think. He, don't forget, he also did us the buses and the trams as well. Alongside some planes for Ilos. So maybe really we should turn those um, OE planes back on and have those flying around as well. But uh, look at it. <laughs> How nice is this? Absolutely delicious. Please show some love for Blue Thunder down in the comments. I'm sure he'd love to read it. Uh, and then this spills into the larger airfield, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, over here, um, there's the layers. Uh, the tram now comes down from here as well, which is getting... Well, one person <laughs> is getting on the tram. Pretty much everyone's using the train in the metro. I did a massive car park here, but I felt it was a little bit too much. So I ended up switching it out for some security, where we do have some uh, police parked up over here as well within a chain link barrier. And then this can just serve as airport security over here. I did this elevated pathway kind of as like a skywalk, just really for kind of aesthetics. But um, I have had people walking on it, I think they can actually get into the multi-story car park from here. And 
They're actually getting at the mortar story with them walking on the bridge. Um, I'm not sure if there was any recorded in the detailing footage. I don't think there was. But people do use this, which is very exciting. Uh, this does then arrive at a massive car park with the train station. So these are the internal um, passenger trains that run all the way around. So they're coming out of the downtown here, across the bridge, into the tunnels. Stopping at the airport before then resuming their journey through Valkyrie, Broker, Sentinel, Benezia, at the Golden Egg Coast, and then back to the CBD transport hub. Uh, both vice versa as well, of course, because this is a dual-sided line. And we also use Find It to pull out the tracks that come with the station, just so it looks a little bit more natural. I really like how this looks. And these tracks are really cool. You can just use Find It to get these. And then that goes underground, where we do see a bridge coming over, which is from one of the top-level terminals here. And they can come off down this way and back onto the road. And this national highway is really smooth. Yo, who needs three-lane highways, right? <laughs> just use... Just use the national roads and everything's absolutely fine. It's uh, It's been a really interesting build, Thessie, you know, just cause from that perspective alone of not having massive three-lane highways everywhere. Having to work with smaller regional roads, it's been a lot of fun. And then our trams are moving through here as well. There's various major IMT across the junctions, etc. And this comes through here up to some Thessia flags. There's also another Thessia sign here as well on the multi-story. Um, repeated taxi patterns here as if someone wanted to wait for a taxi, which there is someone actually waiting for it, which is nice. Uh, and then we come up to the main arrival and departure lounge, which is very nice. Lots of parking, multi-stories, etc. You kind of get the idea. I really loved the use of the Japanese hotel here as well. It's not as cartoonish, I think, as some of the other ones. So I really like having that in here too. And then around the side, we did have to switch out the metro or the 600 capacity one because this station is absolutely rammed. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, so lots of people choosing to use train and metro to get away from the airport. I was going to bring some buses over here, and I think we likely will when we come to build those convention centres. But there's not really the need for them right now. The trams aren't really getting any use because the trains and the metro are pretty much siphoning all of the traffic from the airport. So it's both a good and bad thing, I suppose. I would like more people on the trams. There you go, more flights landing now on this platform pretty much immediately fills back up again. Well, we have a really cool exit out of the airport here with the CBD... A big Australian-inspired CBD over there, which there's a view from here. I did end up tweeting the picture, actually. Um, we'll, we'll save the spice for the night time, but uh, you know, the bridge here, rise of the CBD, the park up at the top of the hill, massive airport now. It's just... I, don't know, I feel like this build has really, really tied the downtown together. Not that it wasn't tied together before, but it's just, just gorgeous. <laughs> Huge fan. Uh, Metro now leaves the airport before joining back up with the hill, where it meets up with the cycling road, where we do now have people, hopefully to prove my point, cycling up and over the bridge. Are we going to get a cyclist? Yeah, there we go. There's one coming up here. I oh, know she's walking. I swear there has been cyclists. <laughs> Across the moment. The moment I want to show it off is the moment they stop. But uh, yes, we have seen people cycling um, back over the Thessia Harbour Bridge now. Which gives a lot more purpose to this road, now it's finally hooked in somewhere. And it's uh, really cool to see all people travelling back and to across this massive bit of transport infrastructure. Uh, just to get to the airport, it's very thematic. And it goes one of the trains as well, again, having just stopped at the airport. Alongside that metro. And the trams as well, it's just... All very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> there's, a, there's a view here, actually, I think, of all the different transport layers now, the roads... The, the, the train layers, local roads through here, all the ones coming out the terminal. Looks great when we get a train coming through this tunnel here. Of course, the new metro that's over here as well now. This, this view here really shows off how layered the whole airport sort of infrastructure is. Really cool, isn't it? <laughs> really nice. Yeah, so we'll definitely develop these spaces up here too. Maybe even another um, kind of slip road that maybe comes off the bridge and loops back down into this arterial here. I imagine that would be quite popular access to get to the industrial state over this way. So, uh, something to look forward to anyway. Uh, but then we'll come back to the arterial road, where we do then meet up with a little security gate here. 
and that does slide back and forth. That does allow access into the airfield where there's multiple of these outback planes stored in and around the hangars, which looks really cool. Uh, more prop work over here again with some of the outback prop planes. Again, Blue Thunder just absolutely smashing it out of the park, isn't he? Really, really nice work. Uh, there's airport refueling stations over here as well. Uh, more prop work around those Visit Thessia uh, symbols. I did forget to download uh, a truck to tow these um, baggage carts, but I just ended up using the food truck from plazas and promenades. That pretty much worked perfectly, didn't it? So I'm really happy with that. Uh, and then there's also a whole bunch of storage for these food trucks over here as well, over in the corner of the airfield with forklifts moving trucks and whatnot onto the Sky Chef. Uh, trucks so they can go out and load planes on the airfield as and when requested alongside a couple of warehouses storing metals and animal products which i guess is thematic right you know these pallets of steak and cheese i guess are loaded on ready to be devoured in the sky and then this comes back into a couple of taxi depots with a biofuel bus depot as well because i know we will eventually have buses out here and then we also chucked in some air traffic control in the middle of the runways and then just embellished with some finer concrete work in the form of those pathways just to help bring it all together. And it's a really interesting runway configuration. There is your final shot of all the terminals kind of together. But uh, all in all, possibly my favourite airport build. I think definitely it was no way near as intimidating I think as the Sky Harbour was. <laughs> because Phoenix's airport is just ridiculous and that pretty much was a recreation. Uh, but otherwise, that is going to do it for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, this episode took forever to put together alongside the build. So if you have enjoyed it, those likes, comments and shares below really do help me to justify these kinds of videos. So thank you so much for all support. Glad you guys are enjoying this year and I hope you've managed to enjoy the International Airport. I know these things are always so sought after during the series just because of how big and important they are from an infrastructure point of view. Massive shout out to Blue Thunder again for his work on those Outback Thessia planes. Really cool. Don't forget to check out the ride collection on the Steam Workshop. You'll find all of his work there. And there's just, there's so much. If you want, if you want props and assets and vehicles, you can't really go wrong with Blue Thunder. One of the best there is. Massive shout out to all the patrons supporting the channel. If you're interested in getting involved in that instant gaming and Patreon are the best ways to support the work we do here on the channel down below so if you want a little bit more egg in your life don't forget to go ahead and check them out you might find something for you otherwise please do enjoy what i'm sure will be some extremely impressive cinematics from around the cbd especially that final nighttime shot as well should be pretty special so do hang around for it otherwise i will finally shut up and leave it there thank you for watching such a massive episode this one's well over an hour by now <laughs> so thank you for watching it if you have been to this point in the video otherwise i'll shut up and leave it there Please do enjoy the cinematics, but let's thank you all so much for watching. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.